Hi guys, this is Dr. Nida with Keys of Health. I have had a few requests to do a video on urinary tract infections. I'm going to make it a two-part video. In the first half of the video, I will share with you some of the reasons that cause UTIs. And in the second part, I will share with you my foolproof, surefire way to overcome UTI infections. You don't want to skip any part of this video because knowing the causes is to a certain extent even more important than the treatment. Because even if you treat the condition but you don't understand and stop what caused the problem in the first place, it will reoccur. So you really want to watch till the end. A urinary tract infection is an infection in any part of your urinary system, your kidneys, ureters, bladder, and urethra. However, most infections involve the lower urinary tract, which is the bladder and the urethra. UTIs are more common in women, but that doesn't mean men don't get them. Even babies can get UTIs, and I will talk to you about that as well. Now, if the infection is limited to your bladder, it can be painful and annoying. However, serious consequences can occur if a UTI spreads to your kidneys. This is where I would divide UTIs into two categories, acute and chronic. If you get a UTI and you take care of it right away and address the cause, you will be fine. But if it is a chronic condition, then it is something where you need to work closely with a naturopath to make sure you resolve the problem entirely. Just to clarify, a chronic UTI starts with an acute infection that doesn't get better or seems to clear up, but comes back repeatedly. In some cases, it comes back in just a few days after finishing the conventional antibiotic course. Let's talk about the causes. The most common bacteria to blame for a bladder infection is E. coli. These bacteria are inside of the intestinal tract and can easily invade the urinary tract after a bowel movement. Since the anus and urethra are so close together in women especially, sometimes all it takes is the trigger of sexual activity to spark a urinary tract infection. Once the bacteria have been introduced into the urethra, they migrate to the bladder and can even make it to the kidneys, wreaking havoc in those areas. Let's talk about some of the most common causes and risk factors. If you can prevent or eliminate these, you will have a very low risk of getting UTIs. One of the causes is infection of the bladder. This type of UTI is usually caused by E. coli, a type of bacteria commonly found in the GI tract. However, sometimes other bacteria are responsible. Sexual intercourse may lead to cystitis, but you don't have to be sexually active to develop it. All women are at risk of cystitis because of their anatomy, specifically the short distance from the urethra to the anus and the urethral opening to the bladder. Another cause is infection of the urethra, also known as urethritis. This type of UTI can occur when GI bacteria spread from the anus to the urethra. Also, because the female urethra is close to the vagina, sexually transmitted infections such as herpes, gonorrhea, etc. can cause this infection. Female anatomy, a woman has a shorter urethra than a man does, which shortens the distance that bacteria must travel to reach the bladder. Sexual activity, sexually active women tend to have more UTIs than do women who aren't sexually active. Having a new sexual partner also increases that risk. Uh, certain types of birth control, women who use diaphragms for birth control may be at higher risk, as well as women who use spermicidal agents. Uh, menopause. After menopause, a decline in circulating estrogen can cause changes in the urinary tract that make you more vulnerable to infections. Urinary tract abnormalities. Babies born with urinary tract abnormalities then don't allow urine to leave the body normally or cause urine to back up in the urethra have an increased risk of developing UTIs. This is one of the most common reasons for UTIs in babies and young children. Another thing that puts young children at high risk of developing UTIs is if they are left in dirty diapers for too long. So if babies' uh, diapers are not changed for hours at a time and they're wearing soaked nappies, they're at greater risk of developing UTIs. Unfortunately, once a person develops UTI, there's a good chance it will recur. So babies are put in a disadvantageous position by this neglect from the caretakers. Blockages in the urinary tract can also be a cause. Kidney stones or an enlarged prostate can trap urine in the bladder and increase the risk of UTIs. A suppressed immune system makes a person vulnerable to developing UTIs. 
There are certain diseases like diabetes that impair the immune system, but a weak immune system, no matter the cause, puts a person at a greater risk of developing UTI, just like they would be of developing any other infection. Catheter use, people who can't urinate on their own and use a tube to urinate have an increased risk of UTIs. They may include, this may include people who are hospitalized, people with neurological problems, and paralyzed individuals. A recent urinary procedure, so a urinary surgery or an exam of your urinary tract that involves medical instruments can both increase uh, your risk of developing urinary tract infection. So these are some of the causes and risk factors for developing UTIs. Let's spend a few minutes talking about symptoms. Urinary tract infections don't always cause signs and symptoms, but when they do, they may include a strong persistent urge to urinate, a burning sensation when urinating, passing frequent small amounts of urine, urine that appears cloudy, urine that appears red, bright pink, or cola colored, a sign of blood in the urine, a strong smelling urine, uh, pelvic pain in women, especially in the center of the pelvis and around the area of the pubic bone. These are just some of the more common symptoms of UTIs, but by no means these are all the symptoms. Now, before I give you a treatment plan for this condition, I want to talk about something even more important. How to prevent the infections in the first place? Prevention is always better than cure. First and foremost, drink plenty of liquids, especially water. Drinking water helps dilute your urine and ensures that you will urinate more frequently, allowing bacteria to be flushed from your urinary tract before an infection can begin. At least eight to 10 cups daily, even more if you live in a dry climate or lose fluids through sweating. Drink cranberry juice. And I'm not talking about sugar-filled cranberry juice from supermarket shelves. You want to get pure cranberry juice with no added sugars and no preservatives. If you can, make your own. It is sour, but hey, who said medicine is delicious? Cranberries prevent a broad range of infections. They're not only good for UTI, they're also great for H. pylori and E. coli. So it's an overall all immune booster. As a preventive method, drink one cup of pure cranberry juice a day. If it is too sour for you, you can dilute it with equal amount of water and drink twice a day. The next one is embarrassing, but very important. Clean yourself well after relieving yourself especially after a bowel movement. Washing is definitely more hygienic than wiping, but if you wipe, wipe from front to back. Doing so after urinating and after a bowel movement helps prevent bacteria in the anal region from spreading to the vagina and urethra. Avoid potentially irritating feminine products. Using deodorant sprays or other feminine products such as douches and powders in the genital area can irritate the urethra. Ladies, urinate soon after intercourse. Also drink a cup of water as it will help flush the bacteria. Diaphragms or unlubricated or spermicide treated condoms can all contribute to bacterial growth. So please talk to your doctor about changing your birth control method. Now you may raise your eyebrows on this one, but it is true. Get tested for food allergies as this alone can trigger bladder infections in some people. Avoid sugar, especially white sugar. Like any other living organism, E. coli needs nutrients and sugar is something that these bacteria love. With the introduction of sugar into the body, the acid levels of urine become more hospitable for E. coli, therefore allowing the infection to progress more rapidly. Sugar can also impair immune function. If you have a UTI, stick to a no sugar and no refined flour diet to keep blood sugar levels balanced and avoid the growth of bacteria, at least until the infection is completely gone. Now let's talk about the treatment. This is a general plan that works for most people. If you have any other health conditions, especially chronic conditions and gastrointestinal issues like ulcers or GERD, I recommend working with a naturopath to create a more personalized plan for you. So let's go ahead and talk about the natural treatment. First and foremost, drink plenty of water. Second, avoid sugar at all costs. Stay away from sugar and refined flour as much as you can, if not entirely. Urinate as soon as you feel the urge. Do not hold the urine. 
drink baking soda. Baking soda is an alkaline substance, the opposite of acidic, which makes it help neutralize or lessen the acidity of your urine. If you find yourself resisting the urge to urinate because of a burning sensation, baking soda can help ease the discomfort. So you will need one teaspoon of baking soda in eight ounces of fresh water. Just stir the baking soda into the water until it dissolves and drink the whole cup. Do this first thing in the morning, but it is safe to take it any time during the day. Now, you never want to drink baking soda water for too long. I would not recommend taking it for more than a week at a time. Or if you're trying to avoid salt, don't take it since baking soda is high in sodium. Another thing that's really helpful is drinking parsley water. Parsley water can help relieve a urinary tract infection and uh, speed up the healing process by acting as a diuretic. Diuretics are used to treat a number of problems and work by increasing the amount of sodium your kidneys excrete in urine. When they excrete sodium, they take water along with it and the amount of fluid in your blood goes down. Less fluid means less pressure on the arteries. This is why it's used to treat high blood pressure as well. In this case, uh, in the case of UTIs, we just want to encourage an increased amount of urine to keep flushing out bacteria and relieving discomfort. I will share with you how to make parsley water on Instagram and Facebook, so make sure you check it out there. Another thing that is really helpful is snacking on cucumbers. You want to eat as many cucumbers as possible. Also chew a handful of celery seeds right after a meal once or twice daily. Drink ginger tea as often as you like. Load up on vitamin C. If you have an active UTI, taking vitamin C supplements may also help. Replace bad bacteria with good bacteria. Yogurt is an excellent source of probiotics. You can find yogurt with live active cultures that can do the job or take probiotic supplements in pill form. Soothe the pain with heat. The inflammation and irritation from UTIs cause burning, pressure, and pain around the pubic area. Applying a heating pad or hot water bottle can help soothe the area. Keep the heat setting low and limit it to 15 minutes at a time. Eliminate irritants from your diet. Things like caffeine, alcohol, spicy food, nicotine, um, carbonated drinks, and artificial sweeteners can irritate your bladder further and make it hard for your body to heal. So focus on healthy foods such as high fiber carbs and healthy fats like olive oil, which are good for your digestive health. Lifestyle choices, including the clothing you wear, also make a huge difference. Wear casual, relaxed, and flowy clothing that lets your skin breathe. This can help keep the bacteria in your urinary tract at bay. Moisture is a breeding ground for bacteria in the bladder and elsewhere. Cotton underwear and loose pants or skirts promote air circulation and reduce the chances of bacterial growth. Tight jeans and other snug-fitting pants can trap moisture in your most delicate areas. Empty your bladder after taking a bath and sexual intercourse. And ladies, consider using sanitary pads and avoid tampons. Get cotton line pads if possible since they allow for better absorption and airflow. Dry thoroughly after shower or bath. Change into dry clothes as soon as possible after swimming or exercising. Bacteria thrive in a hot, humid environment and you definitely don't want to create those ideal conditions for them. Avoid washing your genital area with fragrant soaps and other lotions. Also avoid using deodorants as they destroy your body's natural protective barrier and make you prone to developing infections. Last but not least, be active. Exercise daily for at least 30 to 40 minutes. Being physically active will boost your immunity and you will be lesser prone to any kind of infection. Now I will share with you some time-tested herbal remedies for UTI. These include Herva Ursi, Golden Seal, and Oregon Grape Root. You can take them in supplement forms or as teas. Ayurvedic treatments are also very effective. Gokshura and Punarvnava are two herbs known specifically for their ability to support proper functioning of the urinary tract. The formula works to cool and soothe the entire urinary system, including inflamed membranes caused by UTIs. These are all great herbs to soothe uh, the urinary tract and calm the infection. Coriander or cilantro is a helpful household spice to have on hand for conditions such as burning urination. Drinking fresh coriander juice or drinking coriander seed tea are both very effective in relieving the burning sensation associated with UTI. 
These are a lot of remedies. You certainly don't need to do everything. I share a wide variety so you can choose what works for you, but definitely consider all aspects from clothing to lifestyle choices to activity levels and definitely diet. Let me know what helped you the most from this very detailed plan. Drop me a line in the comment section below or get in touch with me via Instagram or Facebook. I love to hear from you guys, so keep those messages coming. Please don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel. I'll see you shortly. Take care. Goodbye.